Well, thanks once again for joining me on Cranford Radio. And I'm joined by the two new rabbis who are here at uh, the temple, Rabbi Rachel Schwartz and Rabbi Neil Tao. Rabbis, welcome to Cranford Radio. Thank you very much. Thank you so much for having Thank us. You. You're brand new to the temple, or at least relatively brand new. You came here at the end of July, I believe, is when you had your official start. So tell me a little bit about yourselves. Uh, Rabbi Neil, why don't we start with you telling me a little bit about your background and, and what brought you here to Cranford? I grew up in Potomac, Maryland. Uh, my father worked for the government, so uh, it was a natural place for us to, to choose to live. And we were very involved in our synagogue back in Potomac, Maryland. Um, actually, the, the rabbi there, who has been my mentor my whole life, Rabbi Leonard Cahan, uh, he he was uh, there when I was born and at my bar mitzvah and at my wedding as well. So, so we have a very long-standing relationship with that congregation. And there, I became a bar mitzvah tutor, a bar and bat mitzvah tutor, when I was in my mid-teens. And that was my first foray into real organized Jewish life. And I very much loved that job. It was my first job, and, and it was a, a point of, uh, of pride and interest and excitement for me. And uh, then when I was about m midway through college, my sophomore year, kind of felt like that was a moment to think about what do I really want to do now that I've put all these thoughts together, taken all these interesting classes and things. And I had a chance to visit the Jewish Theological Seminary with uh, my singing group, actually, it was in a Jewish singing group, and and I looked around. And I said, and I said, this this is the kind of thing that I would really very much like to do um, with my with my life to learn, to teach, to be part of Jewish community building, and that began a two year stretch where I studied Hebrew more intensively and got myself ready for that kind of um, that kind of education. And so right after graduation in, in 2000, that next fall, I started, I started a Jewish theological seminary. The interesting thing was that there were several of those uh, honorary degree speakers at my graduation. Um, one of them was uh, Betty Friedan, fa fascinating one was Hank Aaron. They both got huge stand, uh, standing applause, you know, ovations. There was another one, a guy named Ismar Shorsh. <laughs> who was, for many years, the chancellor of the Jewish Theological Seminary. So it was kind of like the head of school of where I was going, <laughs> was there at my graduation. No one really knew who he was, I think, except me. <laughs> and, and so it felt like there was that segue going forward. And uh, after my years at seminary, including a fabulous year in Israel that Rachel and I did together in 2004-2005, um, I took a position in Bergen County for nine years, fantastic time there, Our kids were born, uh, and then I was two years in Woodbury Island, Long Island, and then uh, I think, you know, and Rachel can comment as well, we, we, for a number of years, for every year that I had worked, we always kind of worked together in a way, um, but never officially, and we felt like our talents really complement each other, and and we wanted to try this way of working where because we're always a team already and now it's official and we get to work together and it's it's some of the most fun um, I've had in doing this kind of work since I was ordained. Rabbi Rachel, why don't we ask you the same question? So I grew up in a small town in Pennsylvania and the Jewish community there was one of those Jewish communities where in order to have a Jewish community you had to participate. So I grew up very actively involved in the synagogue because in order to have a Jewish community, that's just what you had to do. And I had this incredible love of Judaism and a love of God and a love of learning. Um, at that time, though, women were just beginning to be ordained, and it wasn't really possible where I was growing up. Um, we were moving into egalitarianism. The rabbi wasn't the most open, but he did allow us to have our um, – I had a bat mitzvah. But I also didn't know enough. I was from a small Jewish town. And as I got older, I would have these experiences and – these ideas of um, becoming a rabbi would come. In fact, actually, when I was younger, growing up in the small town, I wanted to be a nun. When I would go with my friends to church, um, they had nuns. I just thought we were the small Jewish community, so we just couldn't afford a nun. <laughs> so when I grew older, I wanted to be a nun, but apparently we don't have nuns, and that I was <laughs> had to find a different course. But but thankfully, as I got older, I was really involved in Hillel in college, and I was loved teaching, and I loved learning. I loved being involved in the Jewish community. I had this amazing experience where I once felt this connection with, really strong connection with God. And when I was in college, I, 
I put my application into the seminary and by some miracle was accepted. Um, since seminary, I've been a hospice chaplain for about over five and a half years. I've served as a mishkiach at Ben's Kosher Deli, which was so much fun. I've been a rabbi in a small community in Pennsylvania. And coming to Cranford was just so natural for us. We were looking for a community where we could raise our family, where we would really be a part of the community. We wanted a really warm and welcoming community that shared our values. And this community is so, is so welcoming. It's so warm. It's so passionate about its Jewish learning. It's so engaged. And it just always wants to be a better community and a better part of the community. I mean, they do so much in Cranford that it's just such a blessing to be here. This is something different for this temple. And from what I understand, relatively rare in the United States for a couple to share a pulpit. Even though you've worked unofficially together, uh, what are you finding about working officially together that uh, is, is part of the adjustment? We have both had the experience of being alone in a pulpit. And what I, what I find is that Rachel's skills, uh, Rachel is, is very strong in areas where I'm less, where I'm less strong. And so we make a great team. Uh, Rachel is is excellent in terms of strategic thinking, pastoral counseling, really guiding people through their life journeys, um, and that's an incredible thing. And and the areas where I'm most passionate about are things like teaching, education, service leading, things like that. And so so we balance each other really well, um, and uh, and and it enables us really, I think, to achieve much much more. You know, when when we were interviewing here, some of the people would say would say, do you envision you're sharing more like 60-40, 70-30? We said, no, we really think of it as more like 60-60 because we're able to give so much of ourselves and to focus our attention in areas where, where we're the strongest. And it's a, real, it's a real blessing to be able to, to think through things, to have another set of eyes looking at the same thing and to be able to discuss things and to be able to hopefully come to conclusions that we might not have even come to on our own. Rabbi Rachel, you mentioned one of your previous positions, uh, and you used the word mashkia, if I'm pronouncing that correctly. Tell us what that is. That's a little bit different from something that uh, a lot of folks might be familiar with. So a mashkiach is a kosher food inspector, so we make sure that all the food that people are eating in a kosher establishment is kosher. So what that means is that it's coming in from somewhere where it was, if it's a piece of meat, it was slaughtered in a way according to our Jewish dietary laws, which is a very humane way of um, killing the animal in a holy way so that the animal doesn't feel any pain, um, to making sure that the ingredients that are coming in um, don't have things in them that we can't eat. And then it also means making sure that the diners themselves aren't bringing things in. Um, I was working at a meat restaurant, so sometimes people, you know, you might want to try and bring in some cream and you can't do that. So just making sure that the experience is, is welcoming and warm, but also kosher for everyone who's coming in. And it was a lot of fun because at Ben's we also were outside talking to the customers, answering, answering questions about kashrut and Judaism. And it was just a really great way to live the values and the laws that we learn and care about so passionately. How did the two of you meet? <laughs> we first met in college. I went to Wellesley and I loved Wellesley Hillel, but sometimes we would just have to escape on Shabbat. It was always the same group of women around the table, and we'd love to have these Shabbat experiences or adventures, as we would call them. So one Shabbat, we went to Tufts, um, where Neil was leading services, and I was so embarrassed, because everyone is praying sideways and backwards, scoping out the room. You know, no one is actually praying. It's, it's all like trying to figure out who, who I'm going to talk to at dinner. And anyway, I was so embarrassed. I was just looking forward, but Neil was leading services, so I was maybe just as bad as everyone else. But we didn't start dating then. He was dating someone else. But when I got to seminary, um, we each had two roommates who were cantorial school students, and they had this great idea. Oh, we each have rabbinical school roommates. We should set them up. And they'd plan these elaborate dinners to set us up. And then we started a date, and we didn't really tell them we were dating. It was a lot of fun. <laughs> I understand you brought some changes for Rosh Hashanah, Yom Kippur, uh, back in September. Tell me a little bit about some of the changes that you brought to the temple for that, those occasions. Uh, I mean, I think I think we want, uh, in terms of our approach to things, we we don't want to make dr dramatic or drastic changes. We uh, at the at the beginning, um, we want to work together. Uh, our 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 sort of mo is uh, the way that we work is through dialogue and process. We want to make sure that 
any decisions that are made, whether to keep things the same, to change them, to alter them in any way, are always the, the result of, as much as possible, the result of a community process so that we can all feel invested in it. Um, but we, di we did bring some, some small changes, but things that we, we feel are significant. So for example, um, there's the blowing of the shofar. That's a, a, a very important and it's a, sim it's a very powerful symbol of ushering in the new year, the, the blowing of the shofar. And one of the things that we feel strongly about is, is that everyone should be able to experience that. Um, and, and so what we did was, instead of just having the person blow the shofar from the bima, from the stage uh, down in front, is that for each of those moments of shofar blowing, we had the, the person stand at different positions in the room so that he could be close to the crowd and people could be close to him and kids could walk up and, and, and feel that closeness um, and really be uh, directly involved in it. One of the questions we asked was, what does it mean to be a Jewish community celebrating these holidays? So one of the other changes we did is we, on Yom Kippur, when we were fasting, we had a sandwich making session um, so people could come and make sandwiches for people who were hungry so we could really live our values and we were teaching about fasting at the same time. So really living our Judaism and learning our Judaism. And at the same time, also really changing things for kids and families here. We added um, a whole student experiential time um, where after the kids had their service, they went then went from different rooms learning and doing different exercises so they could be better engaged in their Judaism, which was really exciting and really well received. You mentioned earlier your children. Tell me a little bit about your kids, if you would, please. Sure. We have a 10-year-old, uh, Dara, and we have a six-year-old, Micah. And uh, they go to the Cranford Public Schools. Dara is in fifth grade at Livingston, and Micah is in first grade at Walnut. And they're having a fantastic year. Uh, you know, both of us went to public school growing up from, from K to 12. Or oh, you didn't? From, from 10 to 12, I went somewhere 10 else. 10 to 12, <laughs> went to, right, right, almost. Totally. Um, and and uh, I know I, I went to public school through 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 high school and and our, our daughter did go to a Jewish day school for yeah. three years and our son did for one but this way we, we, we feel that instead of um, sending them away to you know West Orange or another town we really wanted them to meet the kids in the neighborhood because that's the kind of place Cranford is it's a uh, it's a place where neighbors say hello to each other where uh, where we get together, where we walk dogs together, and, and we really wanted our, our kids to have friends right in the neighborhood um, that they could get to know and spend time with, and so we've, we've been very happy so far. It was really wonderful on Dara's first day of school. She came home so happy and so excited, and she said, thank you so much for moving here. So we couldn't be more grateful to the schools and the community for providing such a great experience. At Thanksgiving, you hosted the Interfaith Community Thanksgiving Service, it's obviously, you've, you've only been here a relatively short time, but I'm, I'm curious to hear some of your impressions about Cranford Beyond, some of the things that you've already shared with me. Uh, we, we really feel that Cranford has embraced us in so many ways. Uh, the interfaith community here is, is a very a collegial and, and warm and interested and active, an active group of people um, who, who have really extended a hand and, and I think the interfaith service, and, and I should say thank you to TV35 for coming to cover it, and we'll be able to relive that in the future, thanks to them, um, that, that uh, it, it really, I think, showed in so many different ways um, what, we, what we like and love about Cranford so far. The, the diversity of the crowd, diversity of age, diversity of religious background was, was really remarkable. And, and I personally, you know, was, was very thankful because, again, as, the new, as one of the newer clergy, not the only one, but one of the newer clergy, they were very receptive uh, to me and to us, putting our own mark on the Thanksgiving experience and very supportive of us. And the community was so amazing. Um, together they raised $398 for a cramp for family care and brought in so much food, which is p being picked up today for the Railway Food Bank. Well, even though you've been here, since this summer, I guess officially in terms of being installed, that's something that is still ahead. Tell me about the installation service and what's going to be happening with that, please. The installation is happening on December 17th at 9.30 in the morning, and we're hoping everyone can join us. We're so excited. It's going to be our installation. It's going to be a Hanukkah celebration. It's going to be the dedication of our new accessible sanctuary, 
and Hanukkah is the celebration of the rededication of the temple. So that's so appropriate. And we're ending our 100th year anniversary celebration. So we're going to have a short, meaningful ceremony. And then the rest of the day is all about the community, that we are going to have a synagogue-wide Maccabee game celebrating you know, the Maccabees and the Hanukkah story. And we're going to be blue versus white. And people of every generation in the synagogue community and anyone who's not a part of the community who'd like to join us are going to get together. And we're going to battle it out for the sake of this community, building community together. But then we're also, each team is going to represent a local charity. So the Y Meals on Wheels and the Jewish Family Service Food Bank. And the winner um, will have proceeds donated to their charity. But also, each will also have a chance to fundraise within their own. So we're not only building our community, we're supporting the larger the community. And it's exciting because the young families are excited. We've got people of every generation being captains on our teams. Um, I'm head of the white, Neil's head of the blue, and we are so excited to share this day with the community and so happy that the community is open to doing something different, that it's not going to be, and I mean this with a lot of love and respect, a long, boring ceremony and a very you know traditional, but we're going to be doing this in a really new way, and we couldn't be more thrilled and so excited that I think it really represents the way that we think about our rabbinate and the way that we think about this community and all of our hope and joy and enthusiasm being here. It's the spirit of the hands-on approach that 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 we we believe in, which is that it's uh, when you're when you teach something, it it resonates more when you're involved in it. You know, when you're doing it with your own hands. So, for example, earlier this year, we made uh, we made shofars. Each individual student in our seventh grade class got to make his or her own shofar with our help and assistance, um, and the assistance of you know some of the others volunteers from the community. And then uh, in December around Hanukkah, I'm I'm gonna with my fifth and sixth grade class, we're gonna make olive oil like our ancestors would have made to light the Hanukkah candles. So I'm getting you know the olives shipped in from California and 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 pressing them and. Uh, Rachel's going to teach um, uh, kids how to tie their own seat seat, you know, the corners of the tally tote, the knots and the strings. And, and we just, we, we, we believe in a, in a hands-on approach because we want to teach, empower the current and next generation to take leadership roles. And, and I guess to kind of make ourselves obsolete at some point. <laughs> you know, um, and, and, and that's what gets us excited. Well, thank you so much for joining me today. I've been speaking with Rabbi Rachel Schwartz and Rabbi Neil Tao at uh, TBEMC for short. And thank you so much and all the best as you uh, continue your rabbinate here at, uh, in Cranford. Thank you so much, Bernie. Thank you so much. It's been fun.